Hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. This is Tuesday, March 20... I don't know, 23rd, 24th, something like that. And I'm here, but I'm off camera because today's star of the show is this beautiful pottery right here. Now I'll tell you that everything that you see here except these two vases back here um, is currently for auction in the Old Curiosity, curiosity Shop. These are for sale, but I'll explain why they're not listed yet. Now everything is listed listed today as a, um, I guess I could <laughs> peep at you. Everything is listed as a seven day auction. So if you see anything you like, um, you've got seven days or so to, you know, jump in and take a look and see what you think. So I'm going to start showing you each piece and we're going to start with the beautiful reproduction craftsman style um, vases back here, which you actually saw me pushing them in my shopping cart at the Goodwill. Let me say quickly that I have not been doing any outdoor thrifting um, for the last eight to ten days. We've been here in the Northeast, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut. Um, we went under lockdown pretty early because things escalated here and so uh, I, trust me there's, there's no thrifting going on anywhere and that's probably the same in most parts of the country and probably most parts of the world. Um, I always I don't want to forget my worldwide uh, viewers because we have several and, and I'm appreciative of you watching. So uh, a lot of people wrote in and um, I showed you these, oh, I don't know, last week or so. And lots of folks, you know, were able to look them up and write in and tell me what they discovered about them. So I'll tell you now what each one of these vases is. And I have a little cheat sheet here. They're all inspired by turn of the century uh, art, art, not Art Nouveau, um, craftsman style vases and this matte finish and especially this green was extremely popular and very much in vogue just after the turn of the century. These pieces are all modern reproductions. Uh, this one right here in the front, have you uh, take a look at that. This is... Uh, a beautiful piece and this is called the prairie vase it's in forest green a matte finish which was very typical of the craftsman style and this is made by Gary Steinborn in 2008 you can see that and he is a modern uh, artist this is in excellent condition with uh, no damage at all and just a beautiful example and just, I wish you could just feel the how silky smooth the finish is on this beautiful vase. It's about a nine inch vase, I think, uh, from the, his Prairie Collection. Uh, this one over here has got lotus leaves around the top. This is also in excellent condition with no damage at all. I'll let you see how beautiful the glaze is on it. And this is Puabic of uh, the famous company in Detroit. We'll let you see the stamp underneath. It's clearly marked 2010. I hope it's focusing. And this was one of their earliest pieces that dates all the way back to 1903. And this of course is finished again with this beautiful green glaze. And this is about nine nine and a half inches tall and this can be purchased new on uh, the uh, Poabix website and then finally this piece over here is marked Tico on the bottom and this is their four four flying buttress vase we'll let you see the bottom and it's marked 2007 Tico is an abbreviation for terracotta uh, art pottery, which was produced from the 1890s to about 1920 by the American Terracotta, American Terracotta and Ceramics Company in Terracotta, 
Illinois. And this is about nine and a half inches tall as well. This is the only one that has damage and there's a chip right here that I told you I was going to restore and I'm really not a pottery uh, restorer. So, oops, <laughs> do we have another chip to restore? No, all right. Uh, so you can see there's a chip right here and I just rubbed a little green uh, paint over it just so because it was it was extremely you could see through to the white underneath and I I'm not really trying to cover it up I'm listing it as as damaged as you can see one of the buttresses there is damaged but just by putting a little bit of paint over it kind of hides that uh, the white clay underneath Okay, let's put this one back. So those three are all, all going to be sold individually, not as a collection. And um, this one sells new on the website for, I think, $45. This one, $125. And I can't remember the price on this one. I'm not going to be, certainly this one with the little chip in the back uh, will, will be, I'll be asking much less than what it retail the retail value of it and these pieces over here I'm going to be mar uh, marking uh, less than what you would pay on their website although there's no damage on any of these okay uh, so those that was really a great find at the thrift shop and I was excited to get those this is a piece of Franciscan I had several pieces of this recently and sold them all including just recently the gravy boat uh, this is in the aqua color I'm sorry, turquoise, and it's the Franciscan swirl. I didn't look the dates up. I honestly cannot remember. I think this is a pattern that might have come on the scene either in the late 30s or 40s and probably was produced through the 50s. So it's a mid-century piece, uh, dinnerware, and here's a nice large vase with no damage on this vase at all. And this vase will probably sell for between, oh, 20 to 30 dollars. Uh, at auction. This, boy, what great design on this. Do you love this? Can you tell who made it? I wasn't really sure when I saw it, but boy am I in love with this glaze. It is a pitcher, not a creamer. It's a small, probably a milk pitcher for the breakfast table. There's no damage on it at all, and it's just an absolutely beautiful piece. That it has sort of a mottled finish, I guess is what you might call that. And it's a piece of stangle. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and again, that piece is probably mid-century. I didn't do a great deal of research on it. Okay, let's get these out of the way and we'll move forward. This wonderful piece of Roseville, great big cookie jar. Can you believe this was in Goodwill? Oh my goodness. Well, it certainly was. Now, did I say dogwood? If I did, I didn't mean to. This is magnolia. I don't want to miss up my southern trees, get in trouble with y'all down there in Georgia and Texas and South Carolina. <laughs> what does this New Jersey boy know about tree about trees anyway? I know a little bit about trees, so it's definitely a magnolia and not a dogwood. Nice big cookie jar in good condition. There are two chips on it, which I'm going to show you, but there are no cracks. The front is in beautiful condition, or that side is anyway, and if we turn it around to this side, we slide it forward, you'll see there's a nice little alley right there. Can you see that? I think you can see that. Move it forward. Okay. Not horrible. I'm glad it's there rather than on the handles. And then the lid is also chipped right here mostly on the underside, but looking at it sideways and from the top, you'll see it just a wee bit. So I'm putting the chipped lid and this chip in the back so we don't have to see it. But of course I'm listing it as uh, chipped, but it's nice to know there aren't any cracks in it. The handles are good and strong and it's nice and clean on the inside. So that's all ready for your snickerdoodles. You know what I would put in it. Slide that out of the way. This piece here is called, uh, 
Oh, for Pete's sake. Winged Victory. I think it's a World War II era vase by Nylock. Let you see the bottom. Which is in Arkansas, I believe. The Pottery Company. Are Nylock? 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 Nylons? Um, there, and this comes in many different colors. This is a really interesting color, pretty color, and I haven't seen too many that feature, again, this sort of almost craftsman style turn of the century color. Okay, now this piece, eh, you be the judge. I'll show you what is absolutely a chip, and I don't know that the camera will focus in on it. And it's so tiny that I can't even hardly find it. Here it is. And it literally is the size of the head of a pin. Um, oops. Right there. You see my, my, where my fingernail is? Don't look at my fingernails. I've been doing all kinds of cleaning and projects, and I don't get manicures. Uh, right there. Do you see that? That's really the size of the head of a pin. You'll never see it. And this does not appear to be a chip because it's glazed over. This was done in manufacture. So that sort of beveled off edge right there is completely glazed over and would be something done during manufacture. Another beautiful piece of Roseville. And when I found this, I held my breath because I knew that one of these little points had to be chipped. Had to be. Well... To my utter shock and, and pleasure, there were no chips or cracks on it, and it's a beautiful bleeding heart. Uh, really, a console bowl would have had matching candlesticks on either side of it, and this came out in 1940. And I will let you see it. Mark Roseville on the bottom, and yes, this was at Goodwill. Shockingly so. Not the same Goodwill as the uh, cookie jar. Beautiful color. Again, introduced by Roseville in 1940. And this is a big 18-inch, uh, which means shipping on this is going to be, ah, because this has to go on a box. I know what size box this is. This is going to have to be a 22 length, 22 inches for me to get this in there and to have it shipped safely. And probably it's probably going to be 22 by 10 by 10. Uh, or actually 12, 22 by 12 by 12 is probably going to be the size of the box. I have to fiddle with it a little bit. So I know because we're over 12 inches that that shipping is going to be expensive. I don't think I showed you the bottom of the Roseville cookie jar, which I'm happy to do. Let you see right there. This again would date from the... Uh, I didn't look the date up on this one. I know this was introduced in 1940. And this is probably the late 30s into the uh, 1940s as well. And then finally, uh, Hall, which is spelled H-U-L-L. -L. There's also Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, but this is H-U-L-L. -L. And I have two matching vases, which may be washed out by the light, so let's do something about that, because the colors are really pretty. That didn't do anything, did it? Does that help a little bit? I think that helps, not such harsh light on those. I found these probably a year apart from each other. Uh, one at a flea market and the other one actually in a thrift store. There's no damage on either one. They were probably produced in the 1940s as well. Mass produced and very inexpensive. You could have gone into a department store and bought these. There's not a lot of quality control and you'll get on vases like this, you can see there's a lot of dripping in the glaze. And you see that? Now that, I'm stand now that I've turned the lights off, you probably can't see it. So this is made during manufacture. We can see the way the glaze is just dripping. And it's somewhat crudely painted. I think it was painted and then fired and then maybe painted again. This one, let's see, are they the same on both sides? This is also, I think, a magnolia. 
pattern rather than a dogwood. Yeah, I think it's magnolia. And I will let you see the bottom of this, although it's difficult to read it. Turn it that way. Maybe that shows up. Hall Art Vase USA. Now, I didn't list these. Hall used to be, well, you know, you've heard this so many times, you don't want to hear it again. All of this stuff, minus the reproductions. If they weren't reproductions, we'd be talking thousands back here with the art pottery. But all this other pottery has gone way down in value, and there just aren't really many collectors of a haul anymore. I like them. Beautiful Easter colors. These would be great on a mantelpiece or on a buffet. But I didn't list them, list them because of the fact that shipping the two together is going to be costly. These are heavy bases, and to get both of them in one box, it's going to be a pretty good sized box. And so the shipping might very well be uh, more than what a buyer would actually end up paying for the vases. Uh, therefore, I haven't listed them. And you actually see me using these uh, in my living room as decoration right now for springtime. But if anybody likes these and is really interested, um, you know, if there's some interest out there, I may go ahead and throw them up on eBay and see what happens. But they are going to be going in a pretty decent sized box because of the fact that, uh, let's see, because of their size. And uh, I did sort of allude a couple of days ago about uh, when you get larger than one cubic foot, the price of shipping skyrockets. And that's because shipping is based on, um, not based on weight anymore like it used to be, but it's based on size. And the prices for shipping are just extremely high once you get above 12 inches. So this is going to be a big box. Therefore, I don't know. Okay, that is the art pottery and so forth. And as I said, everything's up and running on the eBay auction. Now let's go, let's take a quick uh, short break here and I'll be right back with the answer to the two mystery items from a day or two ago. Well, there it is. And most of you were able to figure out that it is a uh, tobacco humidor and the telltale sign really is this little space in the top now you would normally stick a paper towel or a sponge if you have one and dampen it and then once you put your loose tobacco in here uh, the moisture from the sponge keeps your tobacco moist my great-grandfather didn't keep his tobacco in anything like this, but he cut up apple leaves, apple leaves, for Pete's sake, Scott. He cut up um, apples, apple slices, to keep his tobacco moist, and it also gave a really pleasant smell. So you could even shove some, tobacco, some <laughs> apple slices in there. And so we'll let you see. You can see a little bit of the tobacco stain in the bottom. Boy, this was really used. That's all. I didn't try to clean that out. But that's what that is. Made in Japan. Some moriage work up here. And painted, uh, we can see, Nippon. And so that dates it between 1890 to 1921. And this is probably much closer to, to 1921. I'm not sure what these sort of um, peasant looking people are doing maybe they're clamming or i don't know what they're doing digging up flower beds or some such thing you could actually do anything that you chose to do with it now this is not listed yet but it certainly will be very soon okay tobacco humidor and this beautiful piece right here haven't really decided yet now we had some suggestions that it could have been made by Cambridge, Northwood, Fenton, or Imperial. And my first thought was that it, that it was a piece of uh, Azurite that Cambridge made. But I've looked at many, many, many examples of Cambridge glass, Azurite glass, and none of them have this same foot. They're all 
Well, they don't have that, I don't know if that's a star, if you call that a star or a, a daisy or a flower or whatever that embossed pattern is on the bottom. I have not seen on any of the Cambridge pieces, Azurite being what they call this particular color of blue. I'm getting maybe more of an imperial glass feel on this. I'm just not sure. Now, it was made probably sometime between 1910 and 1920, give or take on either end, a few years. And it would have had matching candlesticks. Sometimes these were called console bowls, fruit bowls. Uh, you could easily put a flower frog in the middle of it uh, or use it as a little uh, planter not planter, but put water in it and float uh, le uh, little flowers in it and whatnot. But usually just either fruit bowl or console bowl is just the generic term for it. And it's a, I've seen these that are given the uh, stretch glass treatment. We know what stretch glass is, so sprayed and it would have the onion skin uh, treatment to it. But more than one company made this color blue. And remember, of course, it was made again in the 1930s, all of that uh, kitchen glass was made. What was it called? Delphite? I think McKee made some. Fire King made it later and they called it Azurite. But this is the... Azurite? No. Hold on. Delphite? What did, what did Fire King call their... Um, blue? Anyway, it doesn't... it's not important. <laughs> but this is a piece that goes all the way back to... Um, the 1920s and just before, and it really is gorgeous. I'm gonna still do some looking. Does anybody know for sure, uh, but really take a look at this base. Not so much the form, because this form was made by several companies and, and the color is very similar, but I can't quite identify yet who made it. So uh, I'm gonna just keep, keep studying this one. But that's a beautiful, beautiful glass bowl which uh, would look great with the matching candlesticks. Okay, we're gonna play the mystery, what the heck is it? Uh, and I've gotta go find something, so don't you go anywhere. Okay, what in the heck is it? Now you saw me thrift one of these about a year ago, and this isn't the same one that I had a year ago, and if you, you can't go back and, and dig through the archives, I don't want you to do that. Um, but what is it? Anybody know who made it? about when was it made, hint, hint, look at the colors, and uh, who was the manufacturer and, and what, is, what exactly is it. Will it be for sale in the old curiosity shop? It will once we figure out what it is. Now I know what it is <laughs> because it actually says on the bottom, but I'm not going to show you. That's going to keep you guys busy for a few hours this afternoon, right? We're all keeping ourselves busy. Okay, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.